I'm, I'm really uh, pleased uh, that I can introduce a good colleague and friend, Professor Alar Karis. Alar um, uh, was graduated in Estonia, but then trained as a postdoc in uh, Germany, UK, and in Netherlands. He became a really uh, visible developmental biologist, and some of his work, especially on the transcription factors, are still extremely well cited. He, uh, from 2003 to 2007, served as a rector of the University of Life Sciences and then became director of the University of Tartu. He then served as an auditor general and is now the director of the Estonian National Museum. Alar. Thank you for this uh, kind introduction. It's uh, extremely difficult to be uh, the last one. Everything has been said already. Um, last time I was uh, here was a couple of years ago, and uh, the title of my presentation at the time was Who Needs the Academy of Sciences? I thought this was the last time Academy of Science actually invites me here, but uh, I was uh, wrong. So um, I decided to put even a more offensive uh, title to my short um, intervention today, The Coming of a Caravan of uh, Fools. Um, it actually comes, or I, all, I borrowed or stole this title from the from um, one of the songs of um, American singer-songwriter John Bryan, and the first uh, and this caravan of uh, caravan of fools, um, of course, about which Bryan equipped afterwards that uh, any likeness to the current administration is purely accidental. I wish I could say the same here. But what I'm going to uh, briefly talk is about my experience, also as an Auditor General, who has been quite close to, uh, to uh, politicians for, for five years. And this, um, it is important that, uh, as it was said today already, that um, scientists, they need to be uh, uh, salespeople. This was the issue of my talk when I was last time here in the Academy of, uh, of um, Sciences. Because I, I figured out that um, 60 ac uh, academicians haven't spoken anything in, in public in the last five years. So uh, it, this issue is extremely important, uh, equally uh, for the individual scientists, but also the scientific bodies, advisory bodies because uh, they had to play a key role in everyday uh, life to uh, communicate science uh, to the key, uh, key uh, decision makers, but also to the public um, at large in order to uh, encounter alternative facts. It's, uh, quite recently, there was, a, there was a, uh, an article in, in local newspaper titled uh, if a fifth of the population thinks that the Earth is flat, but pretty soon the whole population thinks that the Earth is uh, flat. Uh, so uh, who actually is fools? Is it us who are, who are sitting here? Because I can see only uh, a couple of politicians yesterday and today who are actually interested in uh, in, in this topic, and some of them probably came here because Marie Lauristin uh, was, uh, was speaking. Or are these fools the parliament or the government? Um, I don't know the answer, because when I sent the title, because I was so obsessed of this, uh, of this, uh, of this song, so I um, f thought it's, um, it's, it might be uh, parliament or, or government, but I'm, I'm 
I am not uh, sure. And who actually gives the advice to the Parliament? We heard today that there is a new initiative in advisory bodies uh, in the government. Uh, quite young, with PhD and experienced. We also have uh, Academy of Sciences here, not quite young, but uh, a bit more experienced. So uh, who are these people who are actually going to give advice to, uh, to the Parliament? But I start with, um, with a quote of a former advisor, of a former Prime Minister. It is nice to be advisor to a Prime Minister. One can do lots of travelling, participate at interesting meetings with interesting people. Everybody is very friendly and polite. But, exciting the framework was the established dogmas and suggesting ideas somewhat different in public sector is taboo. It is amazing how, in one voice, everyone is repeating the song once invented. And she continues, in my imagination, being an advisor to a prime minister was giving advice to a prime minister. In, in this detail, however, I proved wrong. The prime minister wanted no advice. This example reminds me of a very interesting phenomenon in biology called the winner effect. When an animal, be a fish or human, wins a contest or election, if you like, there is a large release of testosterone and dopamine into the brain. Over time, this changes the brain structure and chemical makeup, making them smarter, more confident and able to take on larger challenges than before. The win ethic can change people from being powerless and insecure into one of both extremes. The win effect can make one's power go to the head. High testosterone and dopamine are a predictor of success, but if a win effect in your brain is too strong, you don't listen to anybody and start making stupid decisions. Of course, several failures in a row, uh, and sometimes public opinion, grounds political, political to reality. It's just one coin. It, it's not only a winner effect. I have also my own experience sitting in a government meeting. There was a discussion. Uh, I did an ex experiment. There was a discussion about higher education and about uh, the future of University of Tartu. It lasted 50 minutes. Nobody asked anything about this topic from me. So I asked the Minister of Education, who was sitting next to me, why don't you ask me? He said, well, what, why don't you say something by yourself? Because the problem is that the politicians, they have their own advisors, sometimes relatives, sometimes friends, and uh, they live in their own ivory tower. And they are, they are not arrogant in that sense, that they don't want your opinion. But they just don't uh, come up with this idea that somebody is sitting next to you who might know also something. Um, but at some point, everybody, everybody needs advice, even Pope, who is not a politician, but, uh, but he's a very influential person, and it, he recently visited Estonia. Um, he's actually a chemist and uh, he has been working in the lab for a while before going to, uh, going to uh, his uh, recent uh, position. Somebody said, thank God, he's chemist, not uh, engineer. Uh, but even a pope, uh, he has an uh, advisory body, he has an uh, Academy of Sciences, which was actually established a couple of years earlier than uh, Estonian Academy of Science in 1936. 
And he has advisors, so Nobel Prize winners, and also atheists. But uh, back to F. Uh, so, um, so still, what is the advisory role of academics, or acad academies, and uh, and individual scientists in the information-rich society? From my previous uh, position, I know that uh, even without this advisory role, only in Estonia, state agencies commissioned hundreds of studies to a value of dozens of millions per year. And studies are primarily used as background information in the development of policies. But these studies are scarcely used when decisions are made. And in the case of many studies, however, it is unclear whether and what extent they were used. And uh, the use of um, the study of uh, development policy was clearly identifiable only in the case of 46%. Another thing is um, how transparent are these uh, studies. If you read the OSCD report, Scientific Advice for Policymaking from 2015, you can read that transparency in scientific advisory process is the utmost importance. But I give you the example for the, from the real life. Irrespective of a, sim a similar website structure of uh, ministers, Finding, studies, finding the studies is extremely difficult. It's uh, mainly manual work and, uh, and the ministers, they upload them in uh, different parts of their websites. And many uh, studies which have been prepared, which have been financed from uh, European structural funds, they disappear from the website as soon as the program, program has, has ended. And uh, not all the studies are published on the website at all, and uh, they are simply fo forgotten. Or in some cases, I give you just one example, there was a case when the plan was published to study almost five uh, months later because the minister wish to present it in a politically suitable moment. Yet, uh, despite, from, uh, despite some positive developments, it is easy to feel uh, frustrated by the visible failures of evidence to influence policy in different areas. Yes, the President of the Parliament was very optimistic in the advisory role of uh, academies. And he uh, mentioned that one has to accept that policy making is a mixture of politics, facts, and values. And that science only contributes to the one of these, namely facts. Scientists should therefore not expect that policy makers. Uh, we only take into account the scientific evidence because there are many other factors which need to be taken into account. And one other thing which was mentioned also yesterday, trust uh, of a scientific advisor is, uh, is most, uh, most important and these relations between uh, scientists and polit policy makers. And, uh, Scientific advisor was also recognized that uh, in democracy, political decision makers have a right not to automatically follow recommendation based on scientific data and, and studies. Because uh, they have been elected or appointed for their principles and values that they put forward. i just give you uh, one uh, example. 
Quite recently, the Minister of Economic Affairs has teached to plan to uh, privatize, privatize TV Tower. In the grounds of, uh, grounds of security and history. Uh, half a year earlier, the government has decided to, uh, to privatize. And I was uh, sitting in that uh, particular meeting in the government cabinet, and uh, there was half an hour discussion, and, and uh, when I asked the minister, Half a year earlier, you gave us an evidence that it's worth to uh, uh, privatize. Now you're, selling, you're telling me it's, uh, you're telling us it's not. So, is there any new evidence, new some surveys, some uh, research done in, within half a year? There was a silence, and finally, somebody said minister has changed. This is simple as that. And uh, when I talked to um, Kai Raivio yesterday, um, he said he has been working two years in, in one of the uh, reports. And uh, finally he presented the report to the government, but the government has changed. And now this report is uh, sitting and waiting better times. So this is something uh, scientists have to take uh, into account. And another thing. Um, politicians, they don't like uh, listen lectures. Uh, that means uh, you have to be very uh, precise, exact, and you have to, as also Ullema is noticed, it's uh, three minutes. That should be enough. And it's very good that uh, for a third year, year already, the Estonian Academy of Science organizes a competition on, uh, in which public university students explain the field of science in, in three minutes. When I was a, a rector, I also proposed that uh, you should also have a leaflet within your doctoral thesis. It's not a summary, it's a leaflet in that uh, you put down in the layman words what this work is all about. And I guess this would also help to, um, to make um, politicians and, um, and scientists closer in future. And most important thing, uh, one has to be um, resilient. The work of advisory, scientific advisors required, requires great resilience. We don't have time, but I can give you uh, dozens of exam examples from my, from my own uh, experience. But uh, I would like to um, finish up with, um, with the same uh, advice to the Prime Minister. And um, she said, no, being an advisor was definitely not for me. From now on, I will advise the government free of charge, like here today. By the way, anyone can be minister's advisor. All it takes is to voice one's opinion publicly. The Prime Minister at the time, for instance, spent much more time looking at his smartphone screen than his advisor's face. And here comes my advice. To uh, catch a fish, you have to think like a fish. That means if a Prime Minister is looking at the smartphone all the time, that means you have to wind, find a way to, uh, to uh, write it in a way that it finds it on a smartphone. But as I said, the work of scientific advisors requires great, great resilience. More often than not, they will come up against closed doors. 
When it happens, they must consider knocking on a different door or simply waiting for more best circumstances. There is always an our way. And I would like to finish up with uh, the same sing songwriter lyrics, John Prine. When you can't help but lose, you are running with a caravan of fools. Thank you very much. Thank you.